One thing I want to point out, the, the grade distribution was kind of different. The average was a 76, but nobody got a B, nobody got a C. Six people get A's, and five people got a D or an F. It was kind of like, Bleh! right? Um, so again, you can make corrections. If you did not take it, if you missed it, uh, I'll make a makeup test. Normally, you need to email me if you miss something, and then I can, you know, but uh, I'll make a makeup quiz, and then we can figure out a time for you to take it. Okay. Any questions from the quiz that you got back? Um, anything that makes sense as to why you got it wrong or something? Or you guys doing all right? I'm sorry. You're all like, dude, it's Tuesday morning, it's raining, and I'm in stats class. I mean, it's fantastic. I mean, it's great. Okay, all right. Um, okay, so last time we worked on this handout. Uh, let me unfreeze this. If I remember how to do it, there's freeze. Bump, 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 bump. There you are. How do you unfreeze? Bump, bump. Poor little dude. Let me just reboot. So there's that handout on probability distributions. So it's the 4142 handout. Does anyone need that? I apparently only have two left. So everybody got that 4142 handout? That's the XP of X stuff, right? Oh. There's only one problem we didn't finish. Okay, now, <laughs> now it doesn't want to. Is this one? Say again? Is this the same? Uh, no, that's the probability quiz, right? Uh, oh, that one. Okay. Yeah, the one with the X, P of X stuff. Oh, yeah. 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 So as soon as this comes back up, I'll put it up there. All the technology in this room is having issues. I love it. So we just had that very last problem to do. So if, if you missed out on the lecture, uh, just watch the video. We work over that worksheet together. It's on the video. Oh, that's still there. OK, this is really fascinating. There we go. So all we had left was this. So, so we did all this last time. We worked on all this, and of course on the other side is a fully worked out problem, so you can kind of see what the work is and what the ideas are. Uh, and again, just to remind you guys, so chapter two was mostly about what if I give you just a list of data, right? Five, six, nine, twelve, blah, blah, blah. How do you calculate the average? And then we came up with the idea of standard deviation, right? You with me? So if I just give you a list of data, I would love to know where the middle of the data seems to be, and I would love to know how spread out the data seems to be. That kind of makes sense. Those two numbers together, you don't have to tell me all the data points. Just give me those two numbers and have a decent idea of what it looks like. So in a few situations, we're going to learn a new one today. All right? If they give me data in a different way, so if they give me data as a bunch of possible answers and how frequently those answers came up. What does this 18 here mean exactly? For example, 18% yeah, of these kids thought they would retire by age 50. You with me? What are you gonna tell these 4% who think they're gonna retire at 21? What do they think is gonna happen maybe? How nowadays you become like a YouTube star or you become a TikTok or Instagram or something, you're making lots of money on there. Yeah, I'm gonna tell them that's probably not gonna happen, so don't bank on that. Okay, okay. So, one level of this is just can you read the XP of X table if I give that to you? The next level is can you calculate the two most important things to know about any set of data? Where's the middle? Average. How spread out is it? Standard deviation. 
So then we developed this formula here. You kind of watched that get created. And then we developed this piece of this formula down here. And we talked about this. This was a lot of algebra down here, right? Remember? You had to do some foiling. And everybody was like, wait a minute. I was told there wasn't much algebra, but it's just a little bit. Okay. Just kind of catch us all back up to where we left off. All right. You guys doing okay? Okay. So then we worked on all these problems. And the last one we didn't do. Let me ask you this. How many kids did they talk to? How many kids did they talk to? 1,200, 1, right? It just tells you directly. What percentage of them said they would retire by 21? 4%. Four. Four Can anybody tell me how many kids said they would retire by 21? What percentage said they would? Four percent. Of what? No. How many kids? Twelve hundred. Yeah. So what's four percent of twelve hundred? Let me show you a cool little trick. So I want to do four percent of twelve hundred. You guys remember what the word of means in mathematics? Multiply? Yes, multiply. Real quick. The easiest thing is what if I had three crates, and each crate had five. So I have three of the crates with five, three of them, three times five, 15. Or if I said, what's half of eight? One half times eight is four. So of means multiply. What is 4% as an actual number? You guys agree that 4% is not a number, it's a percentage. We made that shit up. What is the actual number 4% represents? You move the decimal how many times? Yeah, why twice? What's the percent symbol mean? Yeah, percent symbol means out of 100. In fact, the stupid percent symbol is just the number 100 rearranged. You guys see that? Okay, right? Yes? I mean, a lot of mathematics is just that. You just got to realize what the... Anyway, so this is 4 out of 100. So 0.04 times 1,200. Okay. So that's how you would put... 4% of 1,200. Let me show you how to do this by hand. There's a cool little trick. If I multiply this one by 100, I have to divide this one by 100. So that overall it comes out the same. What's 4 times 12? What's 4 times 12? 48. 48. Done. I don't need a freaking calculator, right? So you can do that with any decimals, or you can just use a calculator. You with me? You don't suddenly have to do this everywhere. I just want to show you cool little math tricks we're getting. We're the humans here. We made this shit up. We should be able to find some shortcuts. So what does that mean again? 48, what did what? 48 students said they were retired by age 21. Now look at the last question. So why was that question easy? Because retire by age 21, the percentage was 4%. I could see it. So here, what am I trying to figure out? The percentage of students who believe what? Retire before 65. So I need to know what that percentage is. So what percentage of the students think they will retire before age 65? No, no, no. That's the percentage of students who think they retire at age 65. What percentage think they retire before age 65? What's before 65? 50, 40. So what percentage think it'll happen before age 65? What would you do with these? Add them all up. You guys understand what's happening. So there's nothing crazy amazing about this at all, right? Let it be kind of boring. It's, it, if I want to know what percentage before 65, I just add all these up, right? 
Or what's 0.29 plus 0.02? What's 29 plus 2? 31. 1 minus that, 0.69. So I bet you anything, if you add these up, it's 0.69. Yes, no, maybe? Yeah. yeah. If you add these up, it's 0.69. That's the whole thing about if they all add to 1, 1 minus 1 chunk is the other chunk. That's what we were talking about before. Okay. So again, when I said how many kids thought they would try at age 21, that was relatively easy because I could just see the percentage is 4%. 4% of 1,200, 48. If I say what percent think, uh, how many think they will retire before age 65, you've got to add all these up to see what percentage we're talking about. Now, how do you get that? So 69% of what? 1,200. 69% of 1,200. 0.69 times 1,200. Now you can just do the old calculator if you want. 828. 828, sounds about right. Real quick, why does that sound about right? 69% is definitely more than half, right? What's half of 1,200? 600. So 69% of 1,200 should be more than 600. So at least on that level, that makes sense. Okay, all right. Okay. So just so you know, this is sort of a problem I, I kind of threw in just to kind of show you how you can use the percentages to get actual numbers of things, numbers of people. This is the heart of the idea right here, A through D. That's the kind of problems you'll see in the homework. E is just sort of me going one step further. Okay. All right. Okay. So, um, continuing on. So there was just that one problem we didn't get to last time from that handout. Um, there was the very last problem on that probability quiz. Um, I think it was the very last one? No. Which one? Oh yeah, number three. Number three. I want to kind of look at a problem like that because it's going to lead into the last section of chapter four. Anybody else not get their quiz back? Ask you this. Okay. So let's say the last time I checked, does anyone know the percentage of people in the United States that are left handed? Just, does anyone know that offhand? Last time I checked, is anybody here left handed by any chance? Okay. So there's two, four, six, eight, ten, eleven. Yeah, it's roughly right. So one out of eleven is like nine percent roughly. Um, but the percentage of left-handers in the United States is 11%, give or take. Okay. So I'm going to ask you something related to that number three on the probability quiz. So, so what's the probability, I'm asking this, what's the probability that I pick somebody and they're left-handed? Nothing to calculate here. If 11% of everybody in the U.S. is left-handed and I pick one person from the United States, what's the probability they're left-handed? 11%. All right, that's all probability is. So the more, if there were more left-handers, the probability of picking one would go up because you have more chances to pick one. That only makes sense. So this would be 0.11. What's probably somebody is not left-handed? So I use this symbol for not. Why would I just say right-handed? If you're not left-handed, does that mean you're right-handed? No, right? Unfortunately, I have to think about the fact 
maybe somebody doesn't have hands, so they're not any handed, right? So I gotta be careful. I just gotta say either it's left handed or not left handed. So what is the probability somebody is not left handed? It's gotta be the rest, correct? Let that be nice. Eleven percent chance you're left handed. The rest of it must be not left handed. So eighty nine percent. I'm going to try to lead us into the section using some stuff we already kind of know. So let me, let me do this. I'm going to call this for some reason, I'm going to call this P, and I'm going to call this Q. So if I'm looking for a left-handed person and I find a right-handed person, did I succeed? If I'm looking for a left-handed person and I find a right-handed person, did I succeed? I failed, correct? Does that mean a right-handed person is a bad person? Does that fit? No, it just means it doesn't match what I was looking for. So we call this one the probability of success. And we call this one the probability of failure. Okay. So here's a problem just like a problem we had on the probability quiz. If I pick I randomly select uh, five people from the US. What is the probability that um, the third one is left here? And the other ones are. So in this, see how specific that is? That is very specific, yes? The third one's left-handed, the other ones are not. So what is the first guy? And to match what I'm looking for, what's the first guy? Is he left-handed or not? No. So the first guy is not left-handed. And then the next guy would be what? <coughs> not left-handed, right? The third guy, is left-handed. Left -handed. And I already forgot what I was going to do. Sorry, sorry, sorry. To make this a little bit easier to look at. This is Q, right? Is that cool? This is a failure. Failure. Success. And then these guys will be what? Are they lefty or right? What's the only one that was lefty? Third, Third guy. So what are these guys? Are they P's or Q's? P means left-handed, right? Are these guys left or right? Right. right. So are they P's or Q's? Q's, okay. Let me stop for a minute. You guys see how that visually means the third one, the middle guy, is the only success? And a success means finding a left-handed person. Okay, I love that. And again, I'm personally right-handed. I'm not saying right-handed people are evil or terrible or whatever. It's just if I am looking for left-handed, Finding a right-handed person would be a failure. That's it. So do you all agree with me that this, this represents the probability that the first one is not left-handed, and the second one is not left-handed, and the third one is left-handed, and, and blah, blah, blah? Yes? Can you guys remind me what does and mean? Multiply. So this is a lot like that problem, number three, on the probability quiz where it was, uh, what was it? Well, it depends on which version you had, I think. Yeah, one was um, the Gallup poll about the spread of extremist views, and the other one was about taking military action against the Russians. Yeah, well, very exciting stuff. So this would be, by the way, can you guys tell me, in algebra, what is Q times Q, for example? What's Q times Q? What's a better way to write Q times Q? Q squared. Q squared. So what is Q times Q times P times Q times Q? Q P, Q to the fourth. I love it. Okay. 
What does this kind of make sense? What does P represent again? What does the little P do represent? Success. Success. In this case, a left-handed person. What does the Q represent? Failure. Not left-handed person. So what does this mean? One lefty, four not lefties. And that's like a quick way to, to say what this is asking for, correct? I want exactly one left-handed person. And the other four are right-handed. Okay. Or not left-handed. So then to do this, real quick, just to get the answer, what was P again, the value of P? 0.11. And Q was 0.89. So can you guys, you need to borrow a calculator, come up and get one, you're gonna need one. But can you guys real quick put that in the old calculator, tell me what that is? That's gonna be like 0 0.058. 0.069? Zero. Zero? Okay. So there's like a 7% chance that we would pick five people at random and the third guy would be left-handed. It's a 7% chance of that happening. Yes? Doesn't it have to say only for the question Only what? Sorry. Like oh yeah, yeah. I kind of said it because I didn't feel like writing so much. The third one is lefty, and the other ones aren't. Is that what you mean? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I said it, but I didn't write it. Yeah. I could. Yeah, you're right. Because just only the third guy is lefty. Yeah. Okay. So this, this is uh, very specific. Yes? I specifically said I want the third guy to be left-handed. Now let me ask you this. What if, so here's the transition to section 4.3. What if I said, it's all the same stuff. P is 0.11, that's a lefty. Q is 0.89, that's a not lefty. Same setup, and I still randomly select five people, right? But now I want to know what's the probability that exactly one of them is left-handed? Do you see how that, does anybody see how that's different from what we just did? Do you see how this one is much more specific? This one said, I want the third one to be that left-handed dude. If I pick five people, how many ways could one of them be left-handed? Five. five, right? It's either, so what are the five ways? Uh, I really want you to understand this. The first dude could be left-handed, and then the other four aren't. Or, the second dude is right-handed, I'm sorry, left-handed, and the other ones aren't. Or, Q, Q, P, Q, Q, or, Q, 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 P, Q, or Q, 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 P. Now, real quick. You guys are like, holy shit, so many freaking Qs and Ps. And do you have, I really want you to understand what each one of these means. What does this one here specifically mean? Actually, back to right. What does this one right here specifically mean? Uh, Which fourth. dude is the, yeah, go ahead. The fourth, person is fourth dude is the lefty, or fourth person is the lefty. Right? So that's what each of these mean. Doesn't each of these match what I'm looking for? They each have exactly one, it's just different possibilities for which one they are. So this was first one is lefty and the second one is not lefty. That's why it's time. What does or mean? And means multiply. Add. Or means add. So let me ask you, I really want you, and again, what are we doing right now? Just to make sure you guys really understand, you're never going to do the problem that looks like what I'm doing. I am showing you the idea behind the formula we're going to use. That's what I'm right now doing. You with me? So it's not like you're suddenly going to have to do all of this P's and Q's craziness, okay? Each one of these looks like PQ to the fourth, yes? Every one of them has one P times four Qs. 
So every one of them looks like PQ to the fourth. How many of them are there? If I add up PQ to the fourth plus PQ to the fourth plus PQ to the fourth, how many do I get? Five of them. We can see it, yes? You can see how many there are. Okay. So then to get this probability would be five times 0.11 times 0.89 to the fourth. So it's basically just five times that. And I think that's 0.345, but you can double check. In fact, please double check. You never know. You multiply. Is everybody cool with that? Isn't that the probability we just did? 11 times 0.89 to the fourth. So now I've got five ways to do it. What's up? I could, I could have done it wrong in my head. You never know. But again. Oh, no. You know it can't be greater than one. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see. Oh, you have too many fives. Oh. Yeah. There's no distribution because there's no addition. It's just five times this times this. Yeah. So you can just divide that by five or do it all over again. Is anybody else getting 0.345? Yes? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So let me ask you this real quick. Why, why is this a much higher probability than that? Well, let me, let me ask you this. Has anybody ever played a lottery of some kind? We had to pick numbers. Have you ever? I did. I remember my friend and I, when we turned 18, we went and played the lottery. We won like 20 bucks. And then we spent that money on other ones and we didn't win shit. So we're like, well, I'm done with that. Um, but if you, real quick, I'm just doing, if you played a lottery and you had to pick three numbers, and you had to get them exactly in the same order. So if they got one, two, three, you had to pick one, two, three. Are you with me? Versus another lottery where you just had to pick the three numbers. They didn't have to be in the right order. Right? So if the answer is one, two, three, you could have picked two, three, one, and you would have won. You with me? So then which lottery, the first one or the second one, has a, has a higher chance of being one? The first one where you have to pick the exact order it's supposed to be in, or the second one where you just have to pick the numbers to be any order? Second one would have a higher chance. Because you don't have to, two requirements, you have to pick the numbers and the order they're in, whereas this one, you just have, to, it doesn't matter what order they're in. So of course this makes sense. This one allows any freaking order. Anybody could be the lefty. That one is, no, I specifically want the one in the middle to be the left-handed person. That's why that's a much lower probability over there. Okay. Okay. Stay with me now. We're not done with the derivation. This is all conceptual. We're building a formula right now. So, what if I had all the same setup? I want to show you how we're not going to want to do this. Was this list very long? No. What if I select, randomly select, 80 feet from the US? Right? So now I take 80 people randomly from the United States. And I want to know what's the probability that exactly uh, 10 of them are lefties. We are not going to make this list. Can you start to imagine how long this list is? I want 10 of them. So it could be the first 10, right? <clears throat> the first 10 could be lefties, and the other 70 could be not lefties. Or maybe it's the first four, and the middles are all, and then the last six. Or maybe it's the first two, and then there's a, and then, and then the next three, and then a holy, do you, do you understand how many freaking ways there is to do this? There's a stupid number of ways. I really want this next part to make sense. So how did I know there was a five here? What's the only way I knew there was a five here? Because we actually made the full list, correct? This list was short, it was easy, so I could see there's five. Do you start to understand? I really want you with me on this. If I wanted to make this list, uh, holy shit, right? Uh, 
No, thank you. Right? I, I really want you to understand this. Again, 10 out of 80. So could it be the middle 10? What about the 10 that are right next to that? What about the first two and the last eight? What about the first two, the middle four, and the last uh, four? What? It, holy shit, that doesn't even come close to all the ways you can do it. But can you guys tell me, every single one of these, how many P's will there be? There will be 10 of them, correct? And how many Q's will there be? 70, right? Every single one of them will have 10 P's and 70 Q's. Why does that make sense? I want 10 successes and the rest, right? The rest, 80 minus 10, 70 failures. Does that part make sense right there? So what's the only number that I don't know? I don't know what this is. And again, what was that number again? That was, the, that was how long the list is, correct? Really, where'd five come from? Because there's five parts of the list here, right? Do I want to make this list? Do you want to make this list? No, again, shit, I really want you to understand. There's no way I want to make this freaking list. So, do we all have access to a computational device that should be able to count stuff, right? It should be just a fundamental thing it can do. So let's look at the count. So the one thing we're going to use the calculator for to help us is, and then we're going to put this shit in the calculator, of course, but I need to figure out what number goes right here. How long would this list be? Does anyone have a guess about how long this list would be? And do you, does everybody understand what this list is? I want 10 P's and 70 Q's in every way that you can order them. Do you start to understand how that, that could get very long? Does anyone give a guess how long that list is? 120. Say again? 120. 120. Does that sound good to everybody or does somebody else think it's bigger, smaller? There's no way you should really know, by the way. Don't. I'm just asking you for some guesses, and then we're going to see what it really is. Uh, I thought it was a number a lot bigger. Like oh, have you calculated yet? Don't, don't tell me. Okay. okay. So let me show you how to get the calculator to show you. Um, So there's a really cool little thing. If you go to, uh, I've forgotten where it is. Oh yeah, it's under Mac. Okay, so let's all do this. Let's clear this screen so it's all nice and blank. So there's a, there's like a subprogram in the calculator. It's called MCX is what they call it. And that C just means, uh, oh sure, come on. Uh, anybody else need to borrow? Make sure it I turns on. Yeah, I know where you are, so I try. <coughs> Make sure it turns on before you walk too far away. Okay. Oh. Make sure it turns on. So there's a, um, and really, what the C really stands for is, I have 80 places, 80 positions, and I want to choose 10 of them to be left-handed people, right? So there is a subprogram. It's under Mac. So what we want to do is everybody type 80. From those 80 people, I want to choose 10. So go to Mac. Not surprisingly, this is under probability. See there? Do you see this third one? All right, screen, what are you doing? <laughs> the screen's going crazy. That third one is, oh, it's NCR. That's right, okay. okay. Um, don't use National Public Radio. Just do NCR, number three. So what all that means is choose. Now, depending on how old your calculator is, you either look like I do, or you have 80 NCR, and then it's kind of waiting. So how many do I want to choose out of 80? 10. Ten. So see how long this list really would be. That's what this means. This tells me how long the list would be. Does anyone understand what that number means? Long list. Uh, I think I told you guys this. What does that E mean? Ten to the... Times 10 to the... 
So basically, every time I multiply by 10, I move the decimal over once. So I'm going to multiply by 12 tenths. So I want to move this over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. <laughs> Zeros then. That is a freaking huge number. Uh, I really want you to understand what's happening. So this example, five people, one person left hand. I can make that list easy. I don't need the calculator's help. I can see it's five. In fact, let's check it. Let's do five, choose one, five, there you go. So if I have five things and I'm gonna choose one of them, there's five ways to do it. And we see the five ways right there. But maybe, maybe. So we're, gonna, we're never gonna have to make this list again. I can get this number just by doing the, the choose thing. So now, this problem becomes this. 80, choose 10, point 11 to the 10, point 70, yeah, point 70, point 89 to the 70. And let me show you, this is kind of funny. That, like most math equations, that is a sentence. What does this sentence mean? I got 80 people. I want to choose 10 of them to be left-handed. So I want 10 successes, the rest 70 failures. This equation sets itself up. 80 people, choose 10 of them to be successes. So I want 10 of these, 10 successes, and I want the rest are failures. So I can put that all in there at once. Let's try it, let's see, 80. Darn it, I need a camera person. <laughs> 80. Nah, not enough probability. 80, choose 10, hit the over arrow to get back up, times, where do you go, 0 0.11. So I want 10 left-handed people, hit the over arrow to come back down, times 0.9 to the rest, 70. So a 12.24% chance. So if I randomly pick 80 people from the United States, there's a 12% chance, a little over 12% chance, that exactly 10 of them will be left-handed. How are we doing so far? Yes. Uh, how did you get the idea of uh, the triangle? And then, like, you know, like, how did you get it up there? Like, that's something. Oh, like, well, do you have a over? Yeah. Uh, I oh, oh, hit out. the over arrow. Uh, which one? Just that, yeah, the over, over. Oh, this one? Yep. So then you get that up. Yep. So now you want times. Oh, so okay. every time you're in the exponent or down here, you just hit the over arrow to come back to normal. Oh, yep. okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I haven't shown you the formula for this yet. We're actually creating the formula right now. So let's do another problem with completely different numbers and see how easy it is to set up. <coughs> and then we'll talk about what the actual full formula is. So let's say um, the probability somebody, um, what chef? Uh, uh, let's say the probability somebody likes statistics is 0.21. I don't know if you guys agree with that. We'll see. And we select um, 52 people. What's the probability that exactly, um, what do you got, Jeff? Let's see. Uh, yeah, let's say exactly eight likes that. So let's identify a few things. Can anybody tell me what N is? 
N is always the same idea, right? What is N up here? Yeah, N is the sample size, I'm, or the, sa the size of the group I'm working with. 52. What's P? No. P and Q are both probabilities. So they're going to both be less than one. So P is the probability of success. In this case, what am I counting as a success? Like stats. They like stats. So what's the probability of success? What's the probability somebody likes stats? Where'd that come from? Oh. Okay. Um, let me see. How do I address? So this is a question about a situation, right? You with me? That's just a question somebody can ask. Should the question I ask change any probabilities of things happening? If I ask a different question, like if I ask a certain question, should the probability range changes? That would be neat power, right? If I could just figure out the right question to ask, I can make things nice. No, that, that doesn't make any sense, right? So. There is a probability of something happening, and then I can ask a question about it. So what is the probability that somebody likes stats? 2021. 2021. I love it. So I'd like that that happened, and I'm sorry, Martin, you had to be the one to do it, but it was a perfect example how that number will not calculate into the probability of somebody doing something. That's going to have to be given to me. So can anyone tell me what the probability of failure is then? 0.79. 0.79. I like it. What does P plus Q always have to be? One. Why does that make sense? Because one's a probably success, the other's probably failure. Together they should cover everything. I like it. So I, I really want you to see how this sort of sets itself up. I am going to give you the formula, but again, the formula kind of gets in the way. It looks worse than it really is. How many total people do we have we're working with? 52. How many do I want to choose to do something? Eight of them. So how many successes do I have? How many successes do I want? Let me say it like that. Eight. I kind of like it's repetitive. I want to choose eight to be successes. So of course I have eight successes. And how many failures do I have then? Forty-four. Forty-four. So what do these two always add up to be? These two here. N. Yes, they always have to add to be N, of course. If part of it is success, the other part has to be failure. Together, they must make the total. Are you guys with me? So these are little checks. When you set up a formula, you can real quick and make sure that things look to be working correctly. The biggest mistake I see is for some reason, People put numbers in here that are bigger than one. If you see that, these are both supposed to be probabilities. They cannot be bigger than one. So you, should, you know right there something went wrong. Probabilities cannot be bigger than one. So now it's just, can you get all that in your calculator correctly? Let's all try this out. Don't say anything. Let's all try to put this in. What it should look like. What do you guys get? Zero point. Yeah, I get zero point zero eight nine one. All right, is that cool? Where the one came from? So uh, just under a nine percent chance that out of any group of fifty-two people, exactly eight of them will like statistics. let this be nice. Now, now here comes the formula. And do you notice we've done problems and we didn't have a formula? That happens so often. You're so not used to that. So let me show you what the formula, the official formula will look worse than it really is. What is this number always? Every time we've done a problem, what was this number? 
n. So this is n. Now here's something I haven't defined yet. I'm going to call x the number of successes. That kind of makes sense. Because when I ask a question, what's the part that can change? That number. I could have said 11. I could have said 2. I could have said 73. Or maybe not 73. 50. <laughs> Can't be above 52. So this is n choose x. So I have n things. Choose this many to be successes. So that'll be p. I want x successes. Now here's the weird part. How many failures will I have now? How many total do we have? How many total people? N. How many of them are successes? X. How many people are left? N minus X. That's the part that looks worse than it really is. Have the 44 come? Because there's eight there, so 52 minus eight, there must be the rest there. N minus X. Maybe. This is just like probability. Well, this is still probability, but on the table, we did a lot of work before we even knew what the formulas were because we just applied the idea. But this is your, um, so here, I haven't even told you the official name of this stuff. How many possible outcomes are there if I ask somebody, what question am I going to ask somebody? If I take 52 people, what question am I going to ask them? What's the idea of this? Whether or not they... Do you like statistics? Yes, when I say, do you like statistics? How many answers can they give? <laughs> if I said to you, do you like tapioca pudding? What can you say? Yes or no? I love it. Now, technically, we're human. We could say all kinds of shit. Well, it depends. Every other Tuesday I like it, but for some reason Wednesday I don't like it. No, no, no. <laughs> Freaking like it or you don't, right? So yes or no. So these are what's called binomial probabilities. Bicycle, two tires, right? By two things, nomial. That sounds sort of like nominal a little bit, but that's two possibilities, two things it could be. So these are binomial probabilities. Okay, so what I'm going to do finally, my God, Jeff, I'm going to shut the hell up for once. I'm going to let you guys work on some problems. confusing to people, but I just did this to show you an example. Uh, you see... So here's the problem. Here's the setup, right? I tell you everything you need to know. So I ask you to identify. These seem to be the main things to identify. Right here, this is not, this is just an example. Everybody see that? If I ask you what's the probability x is 3, I show you what the formula, and then I show you how to put it into your calculator. You guys with me? Just so you have a nice place to go to reference, to remember how to put that in your calculator. So go ahead and try the first few out, and then I'll catch up to you. Notice I was really nice here. You just have to fill in the blank, and then here you got to actually set it up yourself. Okay. Oh, so this is similar to like the stuff we did here. It's kind of weird, there's one here, but uh, so again, this is just a, an example just to kind of remind you how to put it in the calculator. Um, By the way, real quick, if you do that, let's see. Do that. Yes, let's 
So let's see. This one is kind of nice. Don't get used to this stuff. I don't do fill in the blank stuff too stuff for right now. Um, so n is 44. I got 44 people, and I want to choose in this case seven to smoke. So then I have seven successes, and I have how many failures? 37. The rest. I love it. 37 plus seven is 44. That's a good, good check. Make sure everybody's on the right track. And I do values. Let's see. Uh, let me get my calculator out so I can do it up here. Rotations of the calculator. to the 7 yes. times 0.848 to the 37. So you get 0 0.1611 looks like. In general, we're going to be rounding all of our probabilities to four decimal places. So if you make it a percentage, so if you make it a percentage, it would be 16.11%. So two decimal places for percentage, right? There will be, there's a really, there's a really good reason behind that. I'm getting you ready for something coming up pretty soon. So always four decimal places for um, uh, probabilities. So, how is this one set up? What's the formula look like for this guy? Uh, 44. Good, I got 44. Three, zero. Good, choose nobody. So I want how many successes? Zero. None of them. And how many failures? 44. Now, real, let me ask you this real quick. This, this is what I'm about to say doesn't matter. You can put all that shit in the calculator. What is something to the zero power? No. One. How many ways can you choose nobody from 44? One. One way. I choose nobody. So that's one. That's one. So all you really need to put the calculator is this piece. Or you put the whole damn thing in, right? It'll still calculate it correctly. So let's see. 0.848 to the 44, I get this. This will happen to you in the homework because probabilities can be very tiny, right? So again, this means times 10 to the negative four. Remember scientific notation that the power is negative, you go back. So every damn time you have a negative power. I have to move once just to get around the number. And then in this case, I'm going to have to go with three. So if I do one less than four, three zeros in front of the seven, shortcut. So it's 0. 0.0007. Move the decimal back four places. 0. 0.0007. Which otherwise means that would be really hard to do. With you. So let me ask you this. If I went to a specific area in San Diego and I picked 44 people and I found no nobody in that 44 smoked, is that unlikely? You with me? It's really unlikely. It's less, it's way less than 1%. It's less than 0.1%. It's 0.07% chance. So if I went to a specific area and I took a group of 40, random group of 44 people and nobody smoked, that is evidence that there's something interesting about that area. Maybe just in general, people don't smoke in that area for some reason. Are you guys with me? Maybe in general, they're more health conscious and all that kind of stuff. Sort of like you guys know about the whole PG&E um, 
uh, polluting the water, and there were people that got cancer. You guys heard about this? They made the movie, Aaron Brockovich. I know it's already kind of old, but yeah. So this is in California. So there was, uh, anyway. Uh, if you go test sites and you see a higher incidence of cancer, or you, th that could be evidence that something's happening. So you can calculate, well, as a 0. 0.0003 chance that you'll see this much cancer, and then you see that much cancer, you're like, holy shit, that's good evidence that something weird is happening because it's really different. Something really unlikely happened. That is evidence that something else is going on. Something's caused that increase. Did it definitely, is it definitely something weird? Is it definitely proof that something's going on? Nope. But it's really likely that it's proof that it's, because it's really unlikely that something like that would happen. So if it does happen, that is good evidence, not proof, good evidence, right? So a lot of statistics feels like you're talking about a court case within a reasonable doubt kind of thing, right? Okay. Oh, did I start you back up? Yeah. Did I? Did. Okay. Bum, 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 bum. So what's this guy? Remember this, this at least one? It's always one minus the probability of none. And the probability of none we just figured out, correct? What's 1 minus 0. 0.0007? 9993. I love it. By the way, let me show you something kind of cool. A little side note, because this is going to become something we're going to do a lot of. If I want to do 1 minus anything less than 1, like 0. 0.1275, let's say. Now I know you got a calculator. Ooh. But watch this. Don't use calculator yet. Don't do it. Don't do it. What makes this nine? Eight. What makes this nine? Eight makes that nine. What makes this nine? If you add what? Seven. seven. Eight, seven. What makes this nine? Eight. What makes this ten? Five. So eight, seven, two, five. And if you do any calculator, one minus this is eight, seven, two, five. It's a beautiful shortcut. And again, you can use your calculator. I just like to remind everybody, we're the humans. We invented freaking calculators. We are better than them, right? And then my calculator's listening to me. It's gonna, that's gonna be the rise of the machines now. Good job, John. So this would be 0 0.872, make the last one 10. Cool little shortcut. Okay, now, let me, let me talk about the idea behind part D. Because I always forget to talk about that before we go to the worksheet. Um, so looking at this bomb again, this, I, I actually thought about doing this early and I totally forgot to do it. <clears throat> let, me ask you, let me ask you to come up with a different bomb. Okay. I like to pick on, uh, I don't know, I, I'm a Celtics fan. And I live in California, so that's an interesting conundrum. Um, I remember back in the day, that what's really funny is Shaquille O'Neal was a Celtic for a little while, but I still kind of pick on Shaquille. You guys all know Shaquille O'Neal? Anybody? Back in the day, he played basketball. Was he a very good free throw? Uh, no, no, famously, right? So let's be generous and say he made 30% of his free throws, right? It's actually more than that. If, if somebody makes 30% of their free throws, and they take 20 shots, how many would you expect them to make? He makes 30% of his free throws, and he takes 20 free throws. How many do you expect him to make? Yeah, so if he makes 30% of all his free throws, and he takes 20 shots, 30% of 20 is six. That, isn't that the average? The expected amount is also called the average. It's what he should make on average, he should make six. Does that mean it's impossible that he makes 14? It's just very unlikely. He should make close to six. You with me? So what, is, what do we just do to get the average? Then we just do N times P. That is the most kick-ass formula for the mean we've seen yet. 
They have to tell us n, and they have to tell us p. And if I just multiply them, that's the mean. Done. Standard deviation is a little bit freakier. Standard deviation is square root of n p q. So real quick, let's do this real quick. So this is 6. Somebody help me out. What is uh, n times p? And what's q going to be in this case? What's q? If p is 0 0.3, 0 0.7. Can you guys do this in the calculator real quick for me? Uh, 6, 4.2. It should be like 2.1. <laughs> Not that. 2.0. I don't know. Let me just say it. Make this shit up, huh? You want to say it? Yeah, what is it? 2.0493. 2.049? Okay. So this is how spread from 6 to expect, right? Stay with me now. This gets interesting. Okay. So now we know the average number he would make out of 20. And the spread. Does anyone remember within two steps in a normal distribution what percentage there is? You guys remember, like, if I have a normal distribution and I go two steps up and two steps down, does anyone remember what percentage is in there? 95. So, what percentage is outside? 5%. Let me ask you this. If I said there was a 5% chance of something happening, is that something that would would normally happen? Or is it something that if it happened, that you would go, oh. That would be unusual, correct? Okay, like if there's a 5% chance, well, it's not exactly five, of somebody being shorter than, oh, I forgot the number now, let's say four foot seven. So if you see somebody shorter than four foot seven, you would go, oh, okay. You don't, it's unusual. You don't see that all the time. Yes? Or if you saw somebody who's seven foot six, you would take notice, correct? Yes? Wouldn't you go, whoa, okay, right? Not because you're a bad person, but because that is unusual. So we define unusual to be more than two steps out. So here, watch. Here's the mean. Six. What's two steps up? Two steps. They're each this big, right? So if I add this twice, where do I end up? And gotcha. And then if I take two steps down, where do I end up? So 1.902, I think. I think. Yeah. Yeah. So what does this mean? If he made 14 free throws out of 20, would that be unusual? Is that more than two steps away? Yeah. What's two steps up? 10. So if he made 14 free throws out of 20, would that be unusual? Yes. If he made nine free throws out of 20, would that be unusual? No. no. Because this is where we expect things to happen. So it's just like height. Height looks like this. Dudes are normally distributed. It's roughly 69 inches. So I'd expect most men to have heights around 69 inches. So the minute they're outside of that range, that's unusual. You're like, whoa, okay. Don't see that all the time. Okay, so now, coming back to this. Part D should be relatively easy. I gave you the formulas there. Try to do part D and then try to do part E. What time is it? Okay. When you do n times p here, what do you guys get? 2.688. Okay. And again, you can't have 6.688 people. 
but the average can be anything, right? So let's say it's roughly seven. Standard deviation, when you put all this in the calculator, what'd you guys get? That's the spread of the data. So then, if I go two steps up, two steps down, if I go up two steps, if I add two standard deviations, where would that go, Jeff? I don't know, about 1.4 almost? Sorry? Right. 11. Oh, okay. If you go two steps down, holy crap, poor little dude. Two steps down, that would be like, mm, uh, that would be like 1.9 something, roughly. So if we found, if we talked to 44 people, we went to a certain area, we talked to 44 people, and 15 of them smoked, would that be an unusual result? Officially, yes. Does that mean that's, that there's definitely something weird about that area? No. But that does mean that's evidence that something could be strange. It's much less likely to get something outside of that range. A lot. So like if you just went somewhere randomly picked a place and you picked like 80 people and they were all less than 5 foot tall, wouldn't that be evidence that something's different about wherever you are. <laughs> it's not proof, but it's definitely good evidence. It's something weird about where you are. Okay. Um, 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 um. okay. So I, I wanna show you uh, an example of this in real life, and I'm gonna try to make it up on the fly here. Um, Oh shoot, let me see if I can do this. Hmm. I want to do something. Has anybody ever, ever flown in an airplane? Anybody? Anybody? When you go to the airport, have you ever heard? I don't remember if I talked to you about this now. I, I say this all the time. Did you ever hear um, did you ever get bumped from a flight? Or did you hear over the over the announcer uh, if anybody would like to give up their seat, we'll give you a uh, $200 credit. And if you wait five minutes, they'll go, okay, we'll give you a $300 credit. And if you wait five minutes, right? Have you guys ever heard of this? Yes? I, I see that happening so much. Maybe you give up the seat for someone who had a kid or something like that. Oh, that's a little bit different, but yeah. So why do you think that happens? What does an airline want to be true about the plane when they take off? They want it to be full. They want to be as many people as possible in that plane. Is there a probability that somebody buys a ticket and doesn't show up? Yes. So there's a probability somebody buys a ticket and doesn't show up. So let's say the probability somebody doesn't show is um, 0.01. It's probably less than that, but we'll say it's 0.1. What's probably somebody does show? Point nine. Let's say this is a small plane. Let's say that we have 80 seats. One of these little planes, right? Little pond skippers or whatever they call them. Yeah, those always make me sick because they're really affected by the wind. So, oh, God. Um, so we have 80 seats total. So if they sell, let's see. Let's see if I can set this up right. I should have done this earlier, but I didn't think about it till now. Um, if they sell 82 tickets, when will they be in trouble? Or, not, not just if 82 people show up, they'll also be in trouble if 81 people show up, right? So I wanna know what's probably that 80, let me say it like this, greater than 80 people show up. Now, I just gave this away. But how many ways could you have greater than 80 in this problem? 
You can either, yeah. So this can be broken down into the probability x is greater than, or I'm sorry, x equals 81, or x equals 82. Is that cool? That's how you can be greater than 8. Why would an airline want to control? So you want to be able to calculate this probability. If that probability is too high, too damn high, what would that lead to? If there's like a 20% chance that they oversell the tickets, what could that lead to? Let's see, you guys. What's the last thing the airline wants to be shown on the news and such? Forcing people out. Yeah. Forcing a bunch of people. If every flight they do, they have to force 10 people off the flight, uh, uh, holy shit, that's bad PR, correct? But then you have, to, all right, so real quick, you don't want to sell, you don't want to go crazy and sell like a thousand tickets for like a flight that's got 250 seats. You are going to be in freaking trouble. It's definitely going to be full, <laughs> right? But you also don't want to sell 251 tickets because probably more than that won't show and then you're not filling that plane. Right? Does that kind of make sense? Are you guys with me, sort of? Okay. So the only way they could possibly have bad PR is if one of these situations happens. Can you guys set up this formula here for me? Well, this is getting a little weird. Um, yeah, so they sell 82 tickets. That's what you want, Jeff. So N equals 82. That's the part that was a little weird. Okay. Okay, this is a real life problem. I just want to kind of show you real quick. Um, so I want 82, and I want to choose 81 people that actually shows. Now here's where things get a little weird. It's a little bit weird. What will P be? What goes here? What will P be? 81 people did what? In this case. Show. Showed up. So which one is P? 0 0.99. 0 0.99. The 81 times 0.01 to the 1. All right, that seems a little crazy, Jeff. Let me see. This is, this is the danger of making a problem on the fly. Uh, let me see. This does what I want it to. Scheiße. Yeah, it's a little too high there, Chef. <laughs> I'm being a little, let me think. Anyway, anyway, all right, all right. We won't do this all the way up. I was just trying to make this up on the fly. Somewhere I have some names, it's all right. But you can see how this type of probability could be used in a situation like this. So you would, most companies have statistical consultants either that work for them or that they actually just kind of like bring in sometimes. So you want to tweak the formulas you use because what probability could change over time that would affect this? This probability. Maybe in the past, for some reason, fewer people weren't showing. Now more people are not showing up. So wouldn't you want to change your calculations as to how many tickets to sell based on that? Do you guys kind of with me? So this is why um, if you get a statistics major, you could just become this stat uh, uh, statistical consultant. And you could just kind of travel and work at several companies and tweak their stuff, tweak their algorithms. Give me the data, I'll analyze it, and then here's how you should tweak things. Then you go to the next company. I actually thought about doing that for a while, but I like teaching too much, so. Uh, but that would be kind of cool to kind of travel around and just kind of like improve shit and then move to the next company and improve shit, right? Um, right, anyway, sorry. I should have made that up before. But something I did wrong, I don't know. Um, so. Yeah, good, we finished that. So the last thing for today. All right, so that's binomial distribution stuff. So you've got the formula or the probability. And then you got the formulas for the mean and the standard deviation. So that's all stuff you can add to your formula sheets, right? So the last thing we'll do, we're getting a little behind again, but it's okay, we'll, we'll work it out.
Um, chapter 5 is going to be really nice. There's going to be a couple homework problems and some weird conceptual questions, but for the most part, the math is going to be really nice. And here's the idea. Can you guys tell me, let me, let me get your take on this. What was this one all about fundamentally? The problem we just did up here. It was a binomial probability. Now, what was the physical situation? We're talking about people. Yeah, smokers, right? Or not smokers. We're talking about people, yes? Is that a continuous distribution? How many people could smoke? Could 1.569 people smoke? That would be so weird. Like, what is this 0.569 person all about, right? You guys with me? So that is, this is a, an example of what's called a, now this should be very familiar to us, a discrete probability distribution. Binomial probabilities are discrete because zero, one, two, three, that's the only possibilities, right? And so are these. Remember these, the ones we did before this in chapter four. Zero, one, two, three. They are discrete because it can only be zero, one, two. You can only be certain values. So what chapter five does is it says, let's look at continuous probability distributions. So a, an example of a continuous probability distribution would be something that talks about height. Can you only, are you, as you grow, are you five foot one and then you immediately pop, pop up to five foot two? Or do you gradually grow between those two heights? <laughs> That'd be really weird if I'm talking to somebody who's like 14 and they tell you, boom, <laughs> and it's like, holy shit. Right? Aren't you continuously growing? Height is a continuous variable, correct? What did continuous mean again? <laughs> I like that. Continuous means continuous, Jeff. What do you want from me? So continuous meant it could take on any value, right? You could be 5.93962217 blah, blah, blah uh, feet tall, right? You don't have to be 5.1, 5.2. You, you can be everything in between. Okay. So let's talk about, let's see, like, uh, has anybody ever ridden a bus? Anybody ever rode the bus? Anywhere, anytime you like. Uh, so like you get to the bus stop. There's a chance that it's leaving right when you get there. Has this ever happened to anybody that rode a bus? You, you come around the corner and it's just leaving. You're like, oh, shit. So then you sit down. And let's say the next bus can come anytime over the next 15 minutes. So let's say buses come every 15 minutes. Let's say somewhere where we are in the world. Buses come every 15 minutes. Let's say we're in Germany, because in Germany, you can set your clocks to the freaking trains and buses. It was weird. I went to Europe, and in Germany, train was there. If it was like five seconds late, people are like, what the shit? Italy, it's only an hour late. What's your problem? I'm like, oh, shit, man. What is this going on? Uh, anyway. So buses come. Let's say that buses come every 15 minutes. <laughs> what is the best case? What's the best thing that could possibly happen if you have to take this damn bus? You get to the bus stop, and it's right there. So how long did you have to wait? What's the best case? Zero minutes. So you can wait anywhere from zero minutes. And what's the worst case, of course? The minute you get there, it's leaving. So you'd have to wait 15 minutes. Now, those are two extremes. You with me? You could get there any damn time. So. Couldn't you get there and there's no bus? And then you have no idea how long you're waiting, correct? If that bus is like every 15 minutes, you get there and you're like, I don't know. Did it just leave? Did it, is it, has it been? You guys kind of with me? Is there any amount of time to wait that should be more likely than any other amount of time for some reason? Is it more likely you have to wait for seven minutes for some reason? So when you get there, you have... You don't know what it's going to be, correct? Right before you turn around the corner, you have no idea how long you're going to have to wait. 
somewhere between zero and 15 minutes. So this is what's called a uniform probability distribution. So remember when we made histograms? What did the height mean? If something was taller, what would that what did that mean? More. There's more in there. It's more likely for that to happen. So when I make a histogram, whatever this bar is, it's more likely that somebody is in there because there's more stuff in there, correct? And what did we just say? Is it any more likely to have to wait for a certain amount of time? No, it's, it's all equally likely. You come around that corner and it's just a random, I don't know how long I'm gonna have to wait, right? Maybe? So that's why this is all the same height. Okay, now the real trick here is, let me see. Ah, okay. say this. All right, all right. Has anyone ever uh, played darts? Has anyone ever thrown darts? Okay. Anybody thrown darts like uh, really good at it? Anybody? Yeah? Yeah, okay. Me, I'm like, get a few drinks of me and I'm actually getting a little better. Um, so normally, there's several ways to play, to kind of like play a game of darts. Uh, not that I do all this. If you play like the standard kind of way that people that don't really play darts too much, if you just play that way, which where do you want your dart to end up? What's the most points? Center. Center, right? Well, you can get 60. True, true. But just the way people play like in their backyard or whatever, right? You want to get that bullseye, right? Now, I understand. You're right. You're right. If you play like, uh, there's actually a few ways you can set up the game, but uh, anyway, let's just go with this. Um, you want to get it in the bullseye. To show off to somebody, right? Why is that the place to get? Why would that indicate that you have good skill if you can get in there consistently? It's like the smallest area. It's the smallest area, kick ass. So if I throw a dart and I get here, even if I say, hey, I'm gonna get in this thing, I'm gonna get in this triangle, that is not as impressive as me saying, I'm gonna get in that freaking bullseye. Does everybody agree with me? And it is because of the area. It's much more likely I could just sort of close and just randomly throw it and get it here than it is I can do that there. So aren't, when I have a visualization, aren't probabilities connected to the area? So just like uh, earlier when I had this picture here, which rectangle represents the highest probability? Well, I kind of overdid it. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> this guy, this guy. Right? Kind of made him fat too, but all right. It's all about the area of the shape that I'm talking about. So there's more stuff in here. It's more likely something's here. Here, if I hit that spot and I call it, that is showing that I've got some skill, especially if I do it again. Because I've done something really unlikely because the likeliness is based on the area of the shape. So let's say that the whole area of this, let's call it one. So maybe this area would be like 0.05 or something, right? So if I throw a dart, and we only count it if it lands on the dartboard, we don't count it like the way Jeff does it. And when I get one on the board, I'm like, that's a success. Um, only if it lands on the board, yes? What percent of randomly thrown darts that hit the board will hit the bullseye? 5%. Right? That's if I'm not trying. Now, if I have somebody who's really skilled and they're trying to hit the bullseye, they should probably have a higher percentage that show up there, right? So here's the idea. If I want to show that I'm skilled at something, I want to show that I beat the random chance. So if, if I just start randomly throwing, 5% hit the bullseye, that's not evidence I'm good. 5% should hit the bullseye no matter what, right? But if I throw and I get like 20% in the bullseye, that's starting to be evidence that I'm pretty good. I got four times as many in the bullseye as would happen randomly. You guys with me? Um, normally, if I have time, I don't think we're going to have time this semester, unfortunately, but I like to do something with my stats class where I test you guys for ESP. 
One semester, this girl, she was freaking out. Because uh, I would pair you guys up. Have you guys ever seen the test for ESP? Anybody ever seen the original Ghostbusters? No? All right, so the test for ESP is there are these shapes. This is one shape, and then you have a star, and then you have, let me think, a circle, I think, and a square. So somebody would pick a card, look at it, and the other person has to say what the shape is. Right? So if there's four shapes, what's the probability somebody just happens to randomly pick the right one? 25%. And if I do it three times, that would be 25 to the third power, which is something. I don't know. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> 1 divided by 64, which is whatever that is. 0.0156. So if somebody randomly guessed, they would get about 1.5% of the time, they would get three correct. So what if somebody got all three Correct. Is that evidence that they're able to tell what's on the card just by reading your mind? No. I mean, it is evidence. Is it good evidence? No. What if I did it 10 times with 0.25 to the 10th power? Is that able to handle? I think it should be able to handle it. <laughs> I like that reaction. So it's like, oh, negative seven. So it'd be point one, two, three, four, five, six, nine, whatever. Is that a very likely thing? If you do 10 of these and you pick a card and the other person guesses, what's the probability they just randomly guess all 10 correct? Point zero, 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 nine. Is that very likely? So what if they do it? What if you pick 10 cards and they guess each card exactly right? Is that evidence, let me say it like this, is that evidence that something's happening? Maybe they're cheating somehow. Is that evidence that something is happening? Yes. Is it proof that something's happening? No, because there's a chance, there's a chance. Did you guys know this is over? I think it ended in like 2008. There was somebody who was giving a million dollars if they could prove somebody had ESP. Nobody could do it, right? So uh, it's too late. So if you have ESP, I'm sorry, Mr. Chance. They, they retracted their offer a while back. Um, and with inflation, it probably needs to be $10 million for the whole. Um, okay, so the idea from this is two things. The area of the visual is exactly related to the probability of that part. If the whole area is one. And this was really just talking about if something's unusual or not. Um, so, how do I make the area of this one? How do you get the area of a rectangle? What do you do? Yeah, so I want the length, which is 15, times, we'll call it the height. I want that to be one. What do I multiply something by to make the answer one? No, no, no. Not pow what power do I raise it to? What do I multiply 15 by? Well, how do you solve this for h? Divide by 15. So don't I multiply something by its reciprocal to make the multiplication one, right? So the height would be 1 15. Now watch, so no matter, whatever, however long this is, the height will be one over that to make the whole area one, just like I did with the dartboard. So let's say the dartboard's area is one. So then I can calculate probabilities of parts of it. So watch this. If I get to the thing, I want to know what's the probability that I have to wait for more than um, three minutes, right? More than three minutes. So can you shade that in on the picture? Here's three minutes, roughly. So what's the area I'm talking about? I want more than three. So that area right there. So how, how uh, long is this shaded rectangle? 
12. And how tall will it always be? What's the height that we figured out? So 12 times 115. Should be 0.8. Is that right? Yes. So 80% chance. So if you get to the bus stop and there's no bus, there's an 80% chance you'll have to wait at least three or, or more than three minutes. So chapter five, if you let it be, is stupid nice. You just have rectangles. So they're gonna give you this. You can figure out the height very quickly, and then for each problem, you just sort of show it on the picture and you figure out what's the area of that little slice I just did. That's really all uniform probabilities are. Okay. So real quick, one more. If I wanted to know the probability that X is between two and six. So here's two. Here's a six roughly. How would I figure out that probability? Yeah, how wide, how, how long is this? Four. four. And how tall is it? One fifteenth. So this would be four times one fifteenth. Four fifteenths. And then you can just do that in the old calculator, right? Almost too nice to believe. And again, it's really kind of related to this, which you kind of intuitively understood. The area of the shape is related to the probability I get there. So if I can draw the picture, I can then identify the part that I'm asked about, and then figure out the area. I'm done. That's crazy. Okay. And you're like, yeah, Jeff. All right. I think that's plenty. That's plenty for today. So uh, next time, we just basically got into chapter five, by the way. Just make sure you understand. Uh, next time, we'll finish five. Five's only got two sections in it. So we'll finish five, get into six. Um, chapter six is basically the most important chapter. It sets up everything after it, so.